At Athletic Brewing Co., we know the big game's no time for a bad call, on or off the field. This year, you and your friends can make the best call of the night by bringing Athletic Brews to the party. Whether they're your pick for the night or the perfect fourth quarter audible, Athletic Brewing Co.'s great tasting, non-alcoholic brews can put a win without a hangover in the palm of everyone's hands. Head to athleticbrewing.com to find a store near you and stock up for Sunday. Race to savings on your next project right now at Menards. From countertops to cabinetry, Menards carries everything you need to turn your kitchen dreams into reality. Renovate your space with new cabinets from Cardell. Ready to install and featuring a modern look. Cardell cabinets give your kitchen a new feel. Right now, get a free sink base with a purchase of any Cardell cabinet system. Good through February 18th. See store for details. Save big money at Hey, Browns fans, before we get started, just want to thank the sponsors of today's show. Head to omahasteaks.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S right now and use promo code dogs when you check out. Take advantage of the 50% off site-wide sale, plus you'll get eight free burgers with your order. And again, use that code dogs when you check out to get $30 off your order. And Danger Coffee. Get 10% off at dangercoffee.com slash dogs. Use promo code dogs. 10% off mold-free, toxin-free, delicious coffee. So that we are going to get to a voicemail now. We do have a voicemail we want to get to before we talk about the next award. This one's from Kenny Mack. Yo, guys, it's Kenny Mack. And shout out to all our guys nominated in all those categories that won. But we got to talk about the Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, what's going on, Steelers fan? You got to just take your little yellow towel and dry your eyes and get over this. There's two things that you guys are doing right now. Number one, you're saying it's fixed or rigged. And the other thing is you keep using the word they. First of all, explain who they is. Is Who's who's against you? Who is the they? Is it just the Browns fans? Is it us? Is it the NFL? Is it all of America? Like, what is going on here, guys? Next thing is, just saying this stuff is fixed or rigged. Like, come on, you can say like a game, like the Super Bowl's fixed or rigged, but like the defensive player of the year, like like generally you're, you're, you're stand to lose money or, or you're going to gain like power or influence. What does the NFL, now tell me this, because I've said this on the line, what does the NFL stand to gain from this? Like this award is chosen by 50 people and they watch way more tape than you and I. So take it up with them. I mean- the Watt just didn't win the award. And Micah Parsons got her back. I mean, watch the tape. Stats are stats. Go Brownies. <laughs> so obviously that takes us into Miles winning his first and well-deserved Defensive Player of the Year award. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I've never seen a fan base melt down over an award that Ooh, they... Oh, man, that, it's been bad. That they... They say they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, so true. No, we, all we cares about Super Rings. Bowls anyways. Well, then why are you in our mentions talking about it? <laughs> for, for a group of people who don't care, you, you're you very salty. Uh, I've been very proud of Josh online, just like picking Every day, day, man. It's Every day. <laughs> and they, did you see the trap I set today about yes, Chris Jones? It was very it good. It was awesome. I said that uh, Chris Jones really sucked last night in the Super Bowl. He had four tackles, no sacks. No tackles for a loss, just complete box score, non-existent, disappearing act. He's a fraud and all this stuff. And I had so many Steelers fans that I've already argued with this weekend saying, what are you talking about? He forced Purdy into a couple of throws that would have been touchdowns if he hadn't put pressure on him. I'm like, thank you for stepping into my trap, you dipshit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Doesn't matter, says Steelers fans are still denial stage. There's at least three more steps to go before healing can happen. Bargaining, depression, and acceptance. It's a very good point. (laughs) I've never seen a fan base become so unraveled over something. And and, and I, we got people on Facebook coming at us like, well, all we care is about Super Bowls and AFC championships, blah, blah. Guys, I don't know. It's not the 2010s anymore or the 2000s or the 1970s. You have done, you're completely irrelevant in terms of postseason football. And I'm not saying that the Browns are the relevant team in this situation, but I'm not the one spouting off that all we care about is the Super Bowls. <laughs> Super Bowls. Well, you, see, Antonio Holmes hasn't been in the league in a really long time, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's been like 15 years. We have more playoff wins in your stadium in the last five years than you do. 
So there stop. To, if if all you cared about was Super Bowls and AFC championships, then you wouldn't be so butthurt that TJ Watt didn't win this award. You're right, man. It's all week, and it's been well. Take your participation trophy, your pity trophy. You know who really cares about winning an award that you know doesn't mean anything or isn't deserved. And I'm like, boy, you guys are really, really upset about this. <laughs> Uh, this person says, if it takes you eight seconds to get a sack, is that better than forcing the QPD to get rid of the ball in two seconds? Exactly. I've had so many arguments about this where, oh, it's, it's driving me insane. And, and here's the deal, too, is this is, I think, where the difference between like us and Steelers fans are. Is I can think that Miles Garrett deserved to be Defensive Player of the Year and still right. say TJ Watt, Watt is, a, is yes, awesome. a great player. If yes. Parsons would have won, I'd have said, yeah, okay, cool. He, he deserved that. If Crosby would have won, same thing. Watt, same thing. Yes. What's the big deal? Exactly. I'm not. If TJ Watt would have won, I wouldn't have been screaming that Miles, like I wouldn't be losing my mind. No, we'd be like, okay. Because cool. I can recognize that Miles Garrett and TJ Watt can both be top level great players. Steelers fans just, they don't have it. Maybe it's like the inbred. I don't, I don't know what it is, but they just don't have the ability to be like only one can. They're like the Highlander. Only one can be yeah. great. There can be only one. Uh, that, that just shows like how old and nerdy I am. Yeah, I referencing for the sure. Highlander. Um, so one thing real quick, can I, can I nerd out for a second? Can I do some, yeah, absolutely, some stats? Bro. Because I was telling Justin before the show, I said, you know, I feel like maybe we were a little unfair to miles over that you know, last stretch of the season where we were saying too, like what, you know, he's not doing anything out there. Sometimes you get a little frustrated as fans, but you know, I looked at the kind of the deeper metrics and after he got that shoulder injury in the Denver game, remember he came out, said, I felt a pop in my shoulder, left in a sling. We thought, Oh shit, he's going on IR. Like we just lost Garrett. He played the rest of the season. And after that game, he came out against the Rams and he only had two total pressures in that game. And then after that, he had four of his, the, the, the next four games were four of his highest pressure rate games of the entire season. So he was getting after the quarterback. And what, what I went through and looked up, every single quarterback that we faced had one of their lowest time to throws against the Browns over that stretch. Like what their season average was, they were at least a full tenth or two tenths of a second. And that's a lot. Mm -hmm. to throw the football less than what they were on their season average. Yeah, that's so a step. And people might not think that's a lot, it's but a, a step. step in the NFL is the difference between a batted pass and a touchdown. Yes. Ball. And all these Steeler fans come in saying, Oh, well, you know, he doesn't finish the play. I said, you know, what, what good's a pass rush if he doesn't get the sack? I said, how's he supposed to get the sack if the quarterback already threw the ball? And I looked it up and he was getting there in under all these pressures are under two and a half seconds. So that's how you get a pressure. It's got to be within two and a half seconds, beat your man. And all of the quarterbacks were getting rid of the ball under that time. And the average time to throw was like 2.78 or something on the season. And all the quarterbacks we faced kept it under that number. So opposing coaches and coordinators and quarterbacks were saying, here's how we can move the ball against the Browns, get rid of the ball fast. Uh, the butthurt squealers fans on the Facebook AFC North trash talk group are having a complete meltdown. <laughs> I've been pounding them mercilessly. Keep pounding, it. baby. We are too. It is so much fun. And, and, and I'll tell you what, it's a fan base that is realizing that, like the window may be closing. Yes. And, and obviously there, it seems like they're always going to be competitive because yeah. of the culture they have and the coach, coach. they have. Yep. And again, we've never come on here and said that like you guys are irrelevant. You guys are the ones who can't, see both sides to anything um that being said like your team like you better hope arthur smith is the answer now i see they're going after ryan Tannehill. i, I saw, saw that, that too i said bring him in that. baby bring him in i love all that you know what i mean yep. like, I'm, I'm here for that like it's like are they not gonna learn I, i'm not saying ryan Tannehill is trash but he was that's, a lot that's not that's not the guy i'd be he's going not after yeah. right he's, now if it was four or five years ago i'd be like oh right. yeah so, um, like, it's a team that, that still thinks it's 1970s or 2010. You, for a team that thinks they're so awesome, you had prime Ben, prime AB, prime Le'Veon Bell, Troy Pomp Malu, uh, James Harrison. You, you won one Super Bowl with those guys. You want to know what's interesting about James was, Harrison? If Troy was still on the team with that year. I don't remember all. That was so long ago. I was literally... 15. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all saying that Miles didn't lead the league in any of the stats as far as tackles, sacks, tackles for loss, 
force fumbles. Mm-hmm. Like those are the kind of the main things they throw in your face. And if you go back and look at when James Harrison won defensive player of the year for the Steelers in 2009, neither did he. He didn't lead in any category. Yeah. Like you can lead. Uh, what? Who's the linebacker who used to play for the Browns? The white guy went to Carolina, I think. Uh, he went to Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Schobert. Schobert. Yep. That dude had lots of tackles. Should he have been defensive player of the year? Right. Exactly. You, know what I mean? you like, look at like Lamar Jackson didn't lead in passing yards, didn't lead in touchdowns. So he was barely what? top ten in any of that. Yeah. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah. He wasn't. And so what? He. You know. It's. It's just wild. And some of the comebacks that they come back with after you point simple things out to them, it's just you know they're melting down because they'll say, well, we own you. How many Super Bowls saw, you guys got? Yeah, I saw somebody say, we own you. I said, you mean since we beat you guys in 2020 and ended Ben's career, you guys have absolutely fallen off. And this year we beat you with DTR. <laughs> you finished behind us in the AFC North. I don't think this is... I'm I don't pretty, think you can say you own us. I'm pretty sure if you go back like five years, we're essentially like we're, we might be 500 with them or it's a game either way. Yeah. And we beat them in a playoff game at their field. Right. So again, it's, it's a, what have you done for me lately league? It, I don't care what happened seven or eight, nine years ago. That's, I guess that's where Steelers fans. Well, live. and they say the same thing. Cause I always point out, they're like, well, how many Super Bowls you got? We got six. I say, well, the Browns have eight pro football championships. Oh, nobody cares about things that happened over 50 years ago. I said, well, I don't give a shit about things that happened over 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So that means we're zero and zero. If we don't get to count our eight championships, then why do you get to count anything in your history? Yeah. Where, where's the line? You could care about things at 25 years, but not 26 years. Exactly. At 27 years, but not like, where's the line? It's, they're so, they're so dumb. They are so very, they're dumb. and that's what I've been saying to a lot of people. There's a lot of football illiteracy is what I'm calling it coming out of Pittsburgh and this whole, I never would have thought that a defensive player of the year award, not going to their guy could do this, but it has exposed them as like idiots. They know nothing. (laughs) And it's just, it cracks me up that it all comes down even from TJ Watt himself. Like he went to Twitter immediately and just posted nothing. I'm not used to. While Micah Parsons out there like, yeah, okay, good for you, miles. You know, yeah, you deserve that. Nothing. I'm not being a little bitch. Like what in, at what point in your life have you just really had it so hard? <laughs> like nothing I'm not used to. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, I was a first round draft pick. Good point. Oh man. I've been defensive player of the year. Oh man. Everybody knows that I'm one of like the top five defensive players. I'm always so put down. Ugh. No, you're not. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You've literally lived life on a silver platter for the last 10 years. Nothing I'm not used to. What? Oh my victim mentality. Freaking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, oh my God. I said immediately that I lost so much respect. And, and the thing is I respected TJ Watt. We always talk about TJ Watt's one of the Wait, best defensive players yeah. in the league. And he comes out and does this shit. And it's like, you can't even congratulate a fellow peer in, in winning an award. I just lost a lot of respect for TJ. The only thing worse than that was his brother's hair last night. Man, that was wild, bro. <laughs> bro was it 2003 was, again? Yeah. I thought like I was a, surprised uh, he wasn't wearing like the white seashell necklace yeah. and, uh, and like some cargo down, shorts and maybe some, down. yeah, like some Birkenstocks. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what is this? What is going Sandals. on with this dude? Who said, hey, man, you can go on TV like that? <laughs> you figure they kind I'm of... Not, and like, I'm not even... like. It's not like I'm over here. I'm not Mr. Style. I, I mean, I got like a borderline buzz cut. I'm just like a, a normal Joe Schmo guy. I'm fat guy, black cheeks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I didn't, I'm didn't. i not going on TV with, like like that. Holy... I was like, like what the fuck is he yeah, doing? Yeah, we all kind of... He looked like he stuck his... There's so much gel. I didn't yeah. know they still made hair gel. No, they do. <laughs> Well, they don't because he took it all. Like yeah. like, it was like, is that LA? Was it LA looks? LA looks. LA looks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. I did want to address uh, face to save where up here said, let's not throw shade at Joe Schober. He did what he could. I wasn't. That wasn't no, shade. That I wasn't was a big show Schober fan. I was just saying the dude, he had lots of tackles and nobody was claiming for him to be defense. Player. Exactly. No, that was not shade. That was yeah. just an example. Uh, but yeah, so. Congratulations to Miles. Hopefully he can build on this. Again, I would love for Miles to be able to not have an injury, put together an entire season, but the fact that he tore his shoulder up and still had a huge impact on the game. Yeah. And and like uh people have said, if you gave any coach in the league, you can pick between Miles Garrett or TJ Watt, I would say 95% of them at least are taking Miles Garrett. Mm-hmm. I it's just you when when we're Browns fans, I, I understand that there's a lot of people bitching right now online and they don't watch the games. They're just being, you know, dicks. But 
Well, Miles Garrett, I mean, when he rushes the passer, it's it's ferocious and relentless. And another thing that we have gone this entire segment without mentioning is how many times he gets held. And I know that oh. they all get held. Oh, bro. But yeah. go just just go to Google. Everybody listening, watching, go to Google, take five minutes and just type in Miles Garrett hold and look at the pictures. There are so many different screenshots from all the games this year with his shoulder pads up here, his face being ripped yep. this way. It, it, That's it's all crazy. Of them, though, dude. That's all of them. If I, you, no, if I, you, I understand. If you that. go back, bro, I saw some uh, some replays from last night. Yeah, on that game winning on like the yeah. uh, game winning drive for the Chiefs, Nick Post is just being like literally tackled. My, I guess my point with that is he's still able to impact the game to record yes. a pressure within that two and a half second, despite the hold. Oh, and another thing, real quick, an ESPN stat because I know a lot of people do not like PFF; they want to cry about that. So let's look at ESPN. Miles Garrett, when he was facing a single team, just a, a, one uh, blocker, had a 30% pass rush win rate. That was Very number high. two, according to ESPN. Michael Parsons is at 35, so he was number one. And then TJ Watt was down at 25. Miles Garrett, when he's facing a double team, his pass rush win rate was 29. So he dropped That's from crazy. 30% to 29%, which was number one. TJ Watt dropped from 25 to 14 yeah. against double teams. Oh. Whenever you when have you ever seen two tight ends follow a oh, TJ Watt around that on Titans the field? game was awesome. <laughs> That's another thing too. I don't I don't watch enough Steelers games, no, but I don't TJ Watt doesn't go down and play inside, right? You know what I mean? Right. With with the three hundred and twenty pound guards and centers, Miles plays up and down the line now that Jim Schwartz is here. So, mm-hmm. um, congratulations to Miles. I mean, just keep rubbing. Anytime you see a Steelers fan from now until whenever they finally decide to let it go, just keep rubbing it in their face. I can't wait to get back on Twitter after the show and just start (laughs) going back at them. It's it's been fun. It has been a good time. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, you know my household runs on Omaha Steaks, and that's why I'm so excited that 50% off site-wide is back. That's right. It's Omaha Steaks President's Day sale. And right now, listeners of this show can go to omahasteaks.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S. Use promo code dogs when you check out and get eight free burgers with your order. With the price of food and meat nowadays being sky high, these are my favorite sales of the year because nothing can beat 50% off all the juicy tender steaks, burgers, chicken, pork, seafood, etc. plus grab a package with the caramel apple tartlets for dessert. I never order anything from Omaha Steaks without getting those caramel apple tartlets. Take advantage of this sale right now before it's over. That's 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com slash dogs. Use promo code dogs and get eight free burgers with your order. Hey, Ohio, if you haven't downloaded the BetMGM app yet, you'll definitely want to take advantage of this limited time offer. New users who sign up through our link must deposit $10 and place a first wager of $5 on any live bet. Once your bet is placed, you will instantly receive $150 in bonus bets. You will get three bonus bet tokens of $50, allowing you to make multiple wagers with your bonuses. This offer is only available if you sign up through our link, which you can find in the description below, or scan the QR code on your screen to start signing up. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you qualify. So looking at the sacks, like I said, 13 sacks in 10 games, that came out to 1.3 sacks per game. And then immediately after the injury, that number dropped to just one sack over the final six games. So there's no doubt. There's no question. The injury was an obvious factor in the overall production, I guess, in terms of the box score and the stat sheet for Miles Garrett, because you don't just drop from, I mean, the dude was on a 22 sack pace over 16, 17 game season. He was on pace for 22 sacks and he ended with 14. So you don't just go from a 22 sack pace to essentially zero without something external causing that to happen. And, you know, I saw a lot of people posting how Miles Garrett's stats are always lower in the last third of the season each year. And when I, when I look at that to me, it's like, well, you know, no shit. When a guy plays the entire season, when is he more likely to be as close to healthy as possible? earlier in the season when is a player most likely to be dealing with various injuries that he has sustained over the course of the season 
later in the season. And as a side note, anyone who says, oh, the second half of the season, he disappeared. It was six games. Last I checked, teams play 17 games, not 12. So it was not it was not a half of the season. It was the final third of the season when people are referring to when they say that. So I know a lot of this is kind of common sense. Obviously, guys are going to be more likely to be injured later in the season than they are early. So, you know, I don't mean to insult you guys watching this. It's primarily, you know, people who jump into these episodes and watch this just to nitpick things. And, you know, now a lot of them are online just proudly displaying for all to see just how little they actually know about football. It kind of drives me nuts. So is it disappointing when his production in, in terms of tackles and sacks dropped off? Of course. Of course that was disappointing. But I did a Miles Garrett, TJ Watt comparison. And even with the drop off in stats, Miles Garrett still maintained higher pass rush numbers than TJ Watt over the entire season. So over the entire course of the season, not just the beginning, not just those first two thirds, but over the entire season, his pass rush numbers were still higher than TJ Watts. So that means even though the tackles and sacks dropped off after that week 12 injury, his pass rush and the impact on the defense did not. His pressure numbers prove that after the injury in the Denver game, even though he didn't record any sacks, Miles Garrett came out and had just two pressures against the Los Angeles Rams. Pretty big down game, but again, it was questionable all week if he was even going to play. But then, after that LA Rams game, Miles Garrett had games of seven pressures, 11, eight, nine. Those were all the highest pressure numbers of the entire season for him. So, even after the injury, it, he was still getting after the passer and causing fits for the offensive lineman. And one other thing to note, because a lot of people ask about double teams. So, these are interesting numbers, and again, a lot of a lot of naysayers are going to say, well, PFF stats are garbage. Well, there's a reason the NFL uses PFF when it's doing its on-screen stats during the games, but whatever. Well, well, let's look at ESPN. Let's just look at ESPN. Miles Garrett beat a single blocker 30% of the time. That was the second most pass rush win rate uh, by, P or by, by ESPN, which they track a pass rush win as beating your blocker within two two and a half seconds so under 2.5 seconds you beat your blocker because i looked the average time to throw for quarterbacks in the nfl this season was 2.78 seconds so do the simple math if you're getting past your blocker in under two and a half seconds and the average time to throw for a quarterback they're holding the ball on average 2.78 seconds you have a good chance of getting in the backfield while the quarterback still has the ball. So that's kind of where those numbers are coming from. So the highest pass rush win rate per ESPN was um, Micah Parsons at 35. Miles Garrett was second at 30. The interesting thing, when Miles Garrett faced a double team, his pass rush win rate was 29%. So essentially the same, 30 to 29, essentially the same number. So whether you had a single blocker on Miles or a double, he was winning his pass rushes at the same rate. That's a monster. That is a man right there. So I looked at TJ Watt. Very interesting. TJ Watt beat a single blocker 25% of the time. So just 5% less than Miles. But what happened whenever he was double teamed? When TJ Watt was double teamed, his pass rush win rate dropped clear down to 14%. That's a huge drop off to go from 25 to 14 whenever you get an extra blocker on you. And then you got a guy like Miles Garrett who you put an extra blocker on him nothing changes with his pass rush win rate. So, you know, there's a, been a lot of slander going on against Miles Garrett. And I'm here to tell you the guy, despite being injured, despite not racking up more sacks after the injury and all that kind of stuff was still getting after the passer at a super high rate. And I mean, he's impacting the game. He's impacting the game. And the last thing I want to talk about with this post injury post week 12 uh, stat line for miles garrett when you look at the time to throw for the quarterbacks of the browns face you had matthew stafford his average so i'll just i'll just list them off here stafford trevor lawrence justin fields case keenum trevor simeon and then of course cj stroud in the wild card game all six of those quarterbacks when facing the browns 
when facing the defense of the Browns, Miles Garrett, the pass rush, Jim Schwartz, everything that was going on with the Browns defense. These six quarterbacks all had a much lower time to throw than their season average. So I'll just use, who do I want to use here? Trevor Simeon, 2.48 time to throw average for his entire season, which was, I think, only three games, but that was what it averaged out to against the Browns. He was dumping it off at 2.29. And I know 0.29 to 0.28 might not sound like a lot, but a tenth of a second can can make all the difference. That's a whole, like Blake said the other night, that's a step for a pass rusher. So these are important numbers. If you look at CJ Stroud, I'll just use him as my primary example. CJ Stroud in the wild card game had a 2.46, 2.46 time to throw. And for his season average, it was almost three. It was 2.93. So it, it I mean, almost a whole half of a second quicker, he was getting rid of the ball in the wild card game. So it might not have felt like Miles Garrett was doing much because he wasn't getting the quarterback on the ground. He wasn't getting sacks. He wasn't making these big tackles for loss and things like that. We have to remember that quarterbacks, opposing coordinators, coaches, by this point in the season, they had all the information they needed on the Browns defense. And it was, don't hold the ball. Just get rid of the ball. We saw it start midway through the game week one with Joe Burrow. We were up at the game and Joe Burrow would literally catch the snap, dump, catch, dump, you know, snap, dump, snap, dump. It was, it was really cool to see because the Browns were forcing three and outs. And that's why the Browns led the league in force three and outs because of this pass rush. So when anybody tells you that pass rush wins and all that stuff doesn't matter unless it results in a sack, they're full of shit. They're absolutely full of shit. And, I I said the other night on the show, I posted a thing on Twitter and the people on Facebook are really freaking out too, because I I made a very snarky, sarcastic comment about Chris Jones only had four tackles, no sacks, no tackles for loss in the Super Bowl. Clearly he sucked in that game. He was a no-show, a disappearing act and a fraud. That was very tongue-in-cheek sarcastic. And a lot of people took it very seriously, which I love because I have so many comments now saying, what are you talking about? His pass rush was literally the difference between touchdowns and field goals or touchdowns and punts. And I'm like, exactly. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly what I was trying to get out of you guys. Thank you for walking into my trap. So don't let anybody fool you. Miles Garrett had an all around great season. He was, I mean, he was, offenses had to game plan specifically for him and Whenever a, an opposing team starts on their week on a Monday, you know, the coaching staff gets together and says, we got to change up our offensive game plan completely because they have this one guy. You're making a huge difference in the game. So that's essentially what's going on with the whole court case thing right now with Deshaun Watson. Nothing new. If, if you take away nothing else from this, this episode, this video segment, just understand that it's really nothing new. These, these headlines and everything about having to go back to court, uh, testifying again, it's, it's not really what it's being made out to be. The big deal to me, and I'll go back to the top of this, is what the NFL said. And I'll kind of break this down as well. So again, this, was, this came out from NFL reporter Mike Florio, and he was suggesting essentially the league may again try to punish Deshaun Watson. So his quote, absent a settlement or dismissal, the remaining claims against Watson will go to trial at some point. Although he has been suspended 11 games by the NFL for the allegations. That's interesting, isn't it? He's been suspended 11 games by the NFL for the allegations, not for the evidence, not for the verdicts, just for the allegations, simply for the allegations. So the dude got accused and got suspended for it. Not a great precedent, NFL. Anyway, although he has been suspended 11 games by the NFL for the allegations, the league has not completely ruled out the possibility of further punishment, given the evidence that could emerge in the remaining cases and or eventual verdicts. Wow, how convenient, NFL. So you're just kind of reserving the right to continue punishing a guy. There there has been (laughs) nothing has been found. After all these years, it's been how many years now since all this crap originally started and there's still been... There's no verdicts. There's no evidence supporting anything. The courts have ruled on absolutely nothing. And yet he's already faced a fine. He's been forced to do, you know, behavioral counseling sessions. And he got suspended for 11 games. 
And a lot of my pissed offness about this situation, yeah, I think a lot of this has been really unfair for Deshaun Watson. Again, go back, watch my video about all of his counter arguments and accusations against his accusers, and you'll get a better understanding of really why. But it's really, really unfair for the Browns. I mean, the NFL is really screwing the Cleveland Browns with all of this because, again, we have a quarterback who lost over half of a season, his first season with the team, over accusations. So what's interesting is Brad Stainbrook on Twitter actually pointed out that this contradicts what Tom Pelissero reported from 2022. So I'll talk about that real quick. What Stainbrook said, the settlement covers the four cases Judge Sue L. Robinson, that was the the independent arbitrator for the NFL uh, suspension hearing, the four cases she ruled on, as well as in any substantially similar violations before the date of the agreement, which was August 18th. And that was reported by NFL Network. So any new allegations of the same conduct from 2019 to 2021 would not be subject to NFL investigation or discipline. So what Tom Pelissero here is saying that when when the NFL ruled that, you know, the suspension, the fine, the behavioral counseling, all that stuff for Deshaun Watson back in 2020, what, 2022 going into that season, that decision, that decision was made to cover, was made in response to. The, there were only four main cases that the individual or independent arbitrator heard for the NFL. It wasn't all 26, like a lot of people believe. It was just four. They picked the four that probably had <clears throat> the best opportunity to provide, you know, any sort of damning evidence against Deshaun Watson because, again, all of these cases are pretty much a crock. So they picked the four that were least crocky and brought them to the NFL. She ruled six games. NFL overruled her, said 11 games. That ruling covered those four cases as well as, according to Tom Pelissero, as well as any substantially similar violations before the date of the agreement. And that was on August 18th, 2022, prior to that NFL season. So that meant that any new allegations that come out after that ruling, any new allegations about an instance that occurred between 2019 and 2021 were already covered. He was already suspended for this stuff. He's not subject to any more investigation or discipline from the NFL. So that's why this whole situation to me is such bullshit that the NFL is coming out and saying that they're not ruling out any further punishment for Deshaun Watson. You've already ruled it out. I don't understand where this shit is coming from. You have already ruled on it. You have already suspended him. All of this stuff, this this current case that is being talked about right now is from that time period that was already covered with the 11 game suspension. It's over and done with. So this goes back again and I, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is where I'm going to get really heavily opinionated, but you have, you cannot convince me that all this punishment, the NFL overruling Sue Robinson, all this stuff did not go back to the Browns giving Deshaun Watson the largest guaranteed contract in NFL history. You can't convince me of it. It, the NFL was pissed off. They were pressured. If you remember this, I mean, this was reported on. They were pressured by NFL owners to do something about this contract because they looked at the Browns and said, you just gave this guy a fully guaranteed $230 million contract. That's insane. No, we can't do that. The rest of the owners were like, we can't do that. We're not going to do that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to give out these contracts to people. Don't set this precedent. You need to stop them. And that's what the NFL is doing. The NFL... As much as I love football, I love the NFL, I love watching football, I love the Browns, the NFL as an organization, as a business, is a piece of shit. It really is. There is no moral code with the NFL. All they Number one is money, number two is money, number three is money, number four, I guess, would be optics, and then like number five would be player safety. But it's all about money and optics, first and foremost. And that's what drives me absolutely insane about this. And you cannot tell me that the the... NFL coming out right now and saying, well, we haven't ruled out further punishment against Deshaun Watson. I'm telling you, this is a bunch of bullshit. Yes, they have ruled that out. They are going back against what they have already ruled. And I hope that the Browns will not stand for this. This is a targeted attack on the Browns because of, I'm sorry, what our front office decides to do with 
our team's salary cap and our team's money and the owner, what we, what our owner wants to do should not be subject to the league's punishment because the league doesn't like it. I'm sorry. Like the Brown, this is what the Browns wanted to do with Deshaun Watson. Agree with it. Don't agree with it. I, however you feel about the contract is your feeling like that's fine. You, you can have your opinions on that. But the fact is the Browns felt okay with it. The Browns were okay with doing it. They wanted to do it and they did it. And now they should not have to be punished unreasonably for it. Now, if this was a reasonable punishment, if something came out, a new allegation came out about something that happened this past year, that's a whole different story. That's a different situation, a different case that was not covered by the original suspension. But everything that's going on right now has already been covered. So that's why it's just so stupid that this is even being talked about, that the NFL has the balls to say we are, you know, we're not ruling out further punishment. It drives me nuts. It gets me going. It fires me up. It pisses me off. And I hope the Browns do not stand for any of this bullshit either, because that's exactly what it is. Bullshit. Again, however you feel about Deshaun Watson is is 100% up to you. If you guys have followed this show, you know how I feel about the whole situation. You guys know how I feel about the the cases, the lack of evidence, and what evidence Watson's team presented and all that stuff. If you want to understand the situation, look into it for yourself. Do the digging, do the research. That's what I did because when we first traded for Deshaun Watson, I, I'm like, well, he is now the quarterback of the team that I cover on my podcast. So if I'm going to talk about Deshaun Watson... If I'm going to talk about the team and the the move to get him, I need to understand the situation. I need to make sure that I feel confident in my soul about what I believe in the way I look at everything. So that's what I did. And that's where we are today. So I know that was a lot. I know I got a little heated in there, but I just, I, I saw this stuff going around the other night and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't, first of all, I can't believe that this deposition, this testifying thing is back in the news cycle because, again, it's not really news. It's just kind of like, well, no kidding. He's going to have to go back and testify again because the case is still open. And what what got me from the start with this whole thing, though, was what the NFL said about not ruling out further punishment. And I just I felt like that had to be wrong. I felt like there was something there that just didn't seem right. And then when I went back and found this original uh reporting from the NFL network about the original settlement, the original suspension for Deshaun Watson and how everything that's already happened in in that time period before all the accusations from that time period before he's already served his punishment for it. So the NFL is, is really trying to screw the Browns here. So I don't know. We will see what happens. I'll continue to cover on this stuff because I don't have a problem talking about it. I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, eh, a little, I don't know if I really want to touch the Deshaun Watson stuff. I don't know if I want to give my genuine opinions on it. I don't give a shit. I'll tell you guys what I think. And if you don't agree, that's fine. Just drop it in the comments. It's better to have a civil discussion than to just be like mean about it. So I'll have a, a civil discussion, a conversation with anybody about this whole situation. But as soon as you throw out a word like rapist or uh, sexual predator, conversations over because you are clearly not going to be a reasonable uh, debater. Those things, he wasn't even accused of those things. So let's just quit the nonsense right now. Anybody out there who is still living in the nonsense, but for all of you other dog pack people, all of you Browns fans out there who just are sick and tired of this crap from the NFL, let me hear what you think. Put it in the comments. Let's talk about it again. Like I said, Anything new developing on this, anything else that comes out, I will talk about it and we'll post it and we'll just continue to monitor the situation as time goes on. This episode is brought to you by Manly Bands. Browns fans, I have an exciting new sponsorship partner for you guys and it is crazy how it all happened, okay? So I'm getting married soon. I went to pick out my wedding band. I did not know that the cost of gold was the highest it's ever been. So, you know, when the rings I, I liked and they pulled out of the case and showed me and I, I turned it over, saw the price tag and they were $1,600. Yeah, I essentially crapped my pants and ran out of there. I hate jewelry stores. I hate the salespeople. I hate the selection. We went and again, true story here, seven different stores looking for a ring and all of them had the most pathetic selection imaginable for men. 
So I said, screw it. I went to manlybands.com and everything after that point was an incredible experience. Their selection is huge. All sorts of styles, materials. Guys, they have wedding bands made from Jack Daniels whiskey barrels, meteorites, and even dinosaur bones. They also have a huge selection of the tungsten rings that everybody likes, cobalt chrome, and gold. And the best part was the customer service was some of the best I've ever received. In a world of AI and bots, Manly Bands keeps it real with real freaking people. The whole experience was so awesome, I asked if we could advertise for them on the show, and here we are. Screw those jewelry stores and those salespeople. Manlybands.com. Use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for a whopping 25% off your order. Whether you've already got a band or you're getting married in the future, check out what they have. Also, you can order a free ring size guide, and they'll ship it straight to you. So you know exactly what size ring you need. And again, never step foot in a jewelry store. And also for you big fellows with the big hands, guys, they got rings up to size 20. Rings come with free engraving in the U.S., and they send you a free silicone band with your order. It's unreal. These guys are the best. Manlybands.com. Promo code DOGS for 25% off your order. At Athletic Brewing Co., we know the big game's no time for a bad call, on or off the field. This year, you and your friends can make the best call of the night by bringing Athletic Brews to the party. Whether they're your pick for the night or the perfect fourth quarter audible, Athletic Brewing Co.'s great tasting non-alcoholic brews can put a win without a hangover in the palm of everyone's hands. Head to athleticbrewing.com to find a store near you and stock up for Sunday. Your fever is high and the pressure to log in at work is too. But when you finally decide to take care of you, there's Instacart. Just because that one perfect coworker is attending meetings, camera on, sneezing, coughing, and aching doesn't mean you have to. Trying to stay on top of things can get you further behind. Instead, use Instacart for tissues to teas, cough drops to soups, delivered in as fast as 30 minutes. Oh, and if anyone needs anything, send them to that one perfect coworker. Instacart, delivery you can count on. Before we dive into the game as a whole, I kind of want to address because it's been like it's been everywhere early in the in the first half. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco fumbles, and then on the sideline, Kelsey's all fired up. He's kind of in Andy Reid's face. You got some people who are just like screaming like it's the most disgraceful thing they've ever <laughs> seen in their lives. You got and then other people are like don't don't care. Andy Reid obviously didn't care. Um, where do you guys stand on this? I, I know what I, where I'm at, so I'm interested to see what you guys think about just the disgusting behavior out of Travis oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think that those two have a really great relationship, right? Working relationship. Um, more, I was more surprised because I felt like the Chiefs are always just super composed like in these moments. And to me, it was almost like for a few weeks now, Travis Kelsey's kind of comes on glue a little bit. I mean, you're smashing his helmet like what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It, it was just kind of surprising. Um, I, so when you watched it, it was like, Jesus Christ, he about, I mean, if he would have knocked Andy Reid over, that would have been pretty, pretty bad look. I don't think it was a great look for him, but I mean, I think those two have a good enough relationship where he was like, yo, Hey, he's passionate. He cares about what's going on. Uh, probably just the wrong approach to it. <laughs> right i, I, I mean, don't know it was just was i don't know again it was one of those things where it's like oh man I, I don't know if you want to be over there ramming into your coach on the sideline at this i mean i understand it's, it is the super bowl it's a very emotional game i just andy reads like he looks so shocked that he was about to get his ass knocked down <laughs> you know whenever i don't even know if he it took him a minute to figure out what even happened there but I don't know. I, I feel like everything gets made to be a bigger deal online. So, yes, he. If you go back and you watch, he doesn't even really touch him. Touch, like he doesn't run into him. Andy Reid is, you know, he's kind of fat and old. So like he almost is more caught off guard and off balance, and like almost falls. And then Travis Kelsey's like grabbing him, almost like, "Hey, don't fall over, man." I just want to and talk he's, to and you. And he's clearly like fired up and yelling, but. He didn't. I saw an article that said he body checked. No, he, no, he didn't body <laughs> check him. And, and this is what drives me crazy. And I don't like to get too political on the show, but he did a commercial. Okay. And now everybody on one side of the spectrum hates him. 
Yeah. And it, he could come out and feed orphans and cure somebody of cancer on camera, and people would be like, he's a government plant. We hate him. <laughs> and it's just, and, and it is so annoying. It doesn't even matter, like, what side of the political spectrum you are on. Like, both sides, people are so freaking annoying. Yes. <laughs> like, you, yep. he is fire. It is the Super Bowl. Okay. He's getting older. You don't know. You, you're never guaranteed to go back to another one as it is. Uh, he won. He wasn't in on the play, which is definitely why would you not have him in down at the mm. goal line? Um, but he's fired up. And if Andy Reid doesn't care and they have a good enough relationship that you can do this kind of stuff, me and Justin have worked together and literally yelled at each other and a fly, lot. like screamed at each other yes. about things at work. It's work. Like, yeah. I also think that there's something that a lot of, I guess there's, it seems like people under, don't understand as much anymore that between guys, like men, this kind of stuff happens all the time. Yes. And and I, I'm not trying to say like men, this women, that, but we don't take things nearly as personal. Like Correct. you come mm. over, body check me because you're pissed off that you weren't in the game and you want to win. Okay, we'll get over this. Yeah, like you know two what I mean? minutes later, yeah, I probably like, forgot. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. chest bumping each other because <laughs> something cool happened. Like it's okay. You know, we get fired up, we get passionate. I mean, it, it, it's one of those running joke things that you hear all the time. Like guys will go out in the parking lot and throw down then pick each other up, go in and grab a beer. Like it's just, it just mm. is what it is. Yes. So like to the, the people, I just, I was curious to see what you guys thought, what the chat thought in terms of, I'm just seeing it like he should have been bent, benched. So if he would have been, if it was a, that big of a deal to Andy Reed, because Andy Reed's the kind of guy he's, I, An I think if coach. It, I think if he really had took offense to it, he would have benched him. He came out, Travis Kelsey came out second half, had eight catches for 92 yards. Yes. He balled out. Mm -hmm. They focused on him. So whatever, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing that mic'd up. I'm pretty sure I know what he said because I'm pretty good at, uh, you know, lip reading. But <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw like a couple um, a couple minutes later, like Travis Kelsey went back up to him and like hugged him and said, sorry about that. And they like kind of like chuckled it off. And, and that's and, how But it of goes. course they didn't show that anywhere. No. Right. You know what I mean? So um, that's one of those things like I just – I, I just, I pretty much hate the, the universe and the world anymore. Like you just, <laughs> you have to base your entire opinion, like based on who you're going to vote for, for president anymore. And it's just so fucking annoying. <laughs> God, I hate it. I know, man. You can't it's, watch it's like, movies anymore. Footballs. You yeah. can't watch football anymore. Like it's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm the weird one, but I can watch a movie that has somebody in it that I know that I might think they're a dumbass in real life, but they're sweet in this movie and I can still enjoy that movie. That's I right. can watch a football player who maybe made a commercial I didn't like and still think he's a good football player and enjoy the football game. Maybe I'm the weird and one. I've said that to people before. <laughs> I've said, I'm not trying to be best friends with these guys. Yes. Like I'm not trying to hang out with them or whatever. It, it just... Enjoy the game. Just enjoy the freaking game. My mm -hmm. goodness, people. Yeah. So I was I was just curious to see what everybody's thoughts were on that. Um, the more that I thought about the game, the game in itself, um, I guess we'll, we'll talk about the Chiefs. Then is where does this put Mahomes in your guys's goat category? We talked about it a little bit before the game. Like, was he already up there? I, Chiefs are officially a dynasty now. Oh, for okay. Sure. I mean, if they weren't already, they're officially a dynasty. I would have called them that to begin with yes. or before this, but yeah. Uh, but three and one in Super Bowls definitely looks a lot better than two and two. Mm -hmm. You know sure. what I mean? Uh, how long does the dynasty last? And can anybody catch them? Is anybody even close? I guess there's a lot to unpack there, but I guess so we can start with, is Mahomes your goat? Is he my goat? Is he the goat? Your okay, goat? So, However you want to answer it. So I think for like this group right here, us, our generation's goat is Tom Brady. We grew up watching Tom Brady, hate him or love him. He was that dude. He was the dude that had the rings. He was the one that was always in the Super Bowl. There's a generation coming up of kids and younger guys and girls now that Patrick Mahomes is that guy. And I think that is he Tom Brady goat right now? No. But is he staking the claim to be there? Absolutely. I mean, the kid is 28. He's got three Super Bowl rings, three MVPs, and he lost one also. He's been in six straight AFC championship games. I mean, like, if you really look at and it's not like, oh, hey, I took less money. Like, he was that guy for a lot of years. He was the dude. You know what I mean? I've never, it, to me, like, when I watch Patrick Holmes, he's like one of the best quarterbacks I've ever watched. Some of the stuff that he does is just phenomenal. So I don't think that you can say, oh, he's taken over Tom Brady is the GOAT, but is he on his way to that? Yeah, 
Absolutely. I mean, Tom Brady played until he's what, 43, 44. This kid's 28. Mm-hmm. He's not even 30 yet. I it's mean, wild. If you, if you, to use the words of Tony Romo, it's the Patrick Mahomes mystique. Oh God! Right. Well, that, how many times did we have to hear that I, BS on the broadcast? Luckily, I was. Night. We had people at the house. I was. The volume listening. was low. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will. Tom Brady's still. I would say the goat because he's the most accomplished over a span of time. He's got all the records, all the mm-hmm. Super Bowls. But I think you can say that. Like I think it's Patrick Mahomes is the best player that's ever played quarterback. I think. I think, yeah. I think you can say that already. That's, I think and you're, the, what he you're can, not allowed What he that. can do at that position is different than what other guys can do at that position. You know, it's, and, and they talk about it all the time. It's the athleticism. It's the arm angles. It's just, he's just so freaking smart yeah. out there. And whenever it came down to that overtime, when they got the ball back after the 49ers kicked that field goal, and I might be jumping ahead a little bit here, but they kept showing Patrick Mahomes on the field after each play and the way he was like, just orchestrating the offense and instructing everybody what to do, where to go, what we're doing here on the field. And it's just a look in his eye. I don't know how to explain it, but I just saw a look. I'm like, they're going to freaking win this game because he's in the, like, that was a zone. Well, you could see the zone in his eyes. I knew they were going to win when uh, they kicked a field goal in overtime and there's two minutes to go essentially. And they had two timeouts. I was like, and then they just let him yeah. go four plays right down the field, just dump offs. I don't know what the Niners defensive strategy was, uh, or in regulation, what was the def- their strategy uh, in regulation when they go up three and there's a minute 43 left, I believe, and Patrick Mahomes has, t- has two timeouts? Why are you playing soft coverage and just letting him three plays? They were in field goal range. Took and it up. looked and it looked casual. Yeah. And they're n- it never looked rushed. It never looked like a two-minute drill. It looked like, oh, we're just – we're going to go down the field here and uh, no big deal. Like, what were they doing? Uh, Pastor Rob up here says, did they give Mahomes the MVP? Yes. I don't know who would get it, but OMG participation award. If I've ever, I'm guessing you might see one. <laughs> who else would you give it to? For the Chiefs? Yeah. Yeah, for the Chiefs, I don't Maybe know. Maybe their kicker? Yeah. When you have three Maybe. field goals, four field goals, and, and a record. Their, he had like a little over half their points. Uh Mahomes was 34 of 46 for 332 yards, two touchdowns to pick, and he had a 99.3 quarterback rating and a 75.8 QBR. Pretty sure he had 60 uh, rush yards, too. 66. Yeah, and he had 66 rush yards. Like where, and one of them was like a, a huge scramble yes. late. Who else was the – I don't understand why this is considered a participation trophy. I, I mean – He did it against what's considered arguably – Top three defense in all of football. After the weekend we've had, too, as Browns fans, the last thing I ever want to hear again is participation trophy. (laughs) So I don't don't buy that for one second. I think he was definitely the MVP for the Chiefs. Now, if it were the 49ers, I I would have gone maybe somebody on their defensive side, Jawan Jennings. Um, I think CMC. CMC. They they had a few guys that were really contributing, and I feel like the Chiefs had kind of – it was spread out. You know what I mean? Like, yes, Travis Kelsey was the leader, but – you know, on the receiving end, but I mean, Rasheed Rice did some nice things. McCole Hardman did some nice things. Nobody, I mean, Pacheco did what he needed to do except for the fumble on defense. I mean, Chris Jones was all over, you know, in, in Purdy's face. And I forget what, what's the one cornerback's name, McDuffie. That was a great play. They, they just had a lot of players play really well, but I think overall Mahomes, without him, you don't go down the field like that. You don't score those points. You don't win that game. Yes, he just always makes the right play. The scr- his scrambling, he's, you don't think of him in terms of like a, he's not a Lamar runner, not even really like a Josh Allen. But we've talked about it even if you go back to when the uh, the Browns played him in the playoffs a couple years ago. His scrambling on third down, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy how he just keeps drives alive with his feet. He can throw on the run from every arm angle. Um, like I said, I don't, know, I don't know if you can call him the greatest of all time yet in terms of career because he's – so far behind in terms of what Brady finished with because Brady played 20 years. Um, and Brady beat him in a Super Bowl. But if the guy plays 15 more years like this, he's going to dwarf every record. He's already, yeah. he's like, if you look at the first so many um, years of their career, what he's played to so far compared to Tom Brady's, he's killing him in essentially every category. I think there's only like three guys really like Tom Brady, Joe Montana. Patrick Mahomes is right there now. And that's one thing, if we're going to, you know, the whole GOAT discussion, I I do like thinking of it more in eras too, because the game of football is so different right now than it was when Tom Brady was first starting out in his first 10 years in the game. I mean, it was 
run and defense and mm-hmm. then him just being able to pick part of defense underneath and all that kind of stuff where the, the chiefs can actually go to Mahomes and say, go win us the game, go, go throw for 300 plus yards. And I just, I, I definitely think what you said earlier is true. Like Brady's got to be the goat of our generation, but Mahomes of this generation is the goat already. I think. Oh, for it. Yeah. It's honestly, I don't even think there's anybody really that close. To I, um, like you, you'll hear Josh Allen, you'll hear yeah. this stuff, but I mean, not, not when it comes point. to <laughs> accolades and Joe, Joe Burrow always plays well against them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Joe Burrow, and I'm, this isn't a Joe Burrow hate session. Joe Burrow has the luxury of throwing to T Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Jamar chase. He has Joe Mixon, uh, Travis or, uh, Patrick Mahomes just won the Super Bowl with the worst wide receiving core in football. McCole Hardman. Caught the game winner. I, they led the league in drops by like I'm pretty sure a significant margin. They 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 had the the worst wide receiver core in football. If this was the year to beat them, this was the year to do it. If you didn't sure. beat them this year, when are who this is kind of goes into my next point. How long does it last? They traded Tyree Kill two years ago and they won two Super Bowls without him. <laughs> right. And everybody thought they were done. Yeah. As soon you, as they traded Tyree Kill. They replaced Kill. Yeah. Tyree Kill. With Valdez Scantling, who can't catch a cold half the time. Most of the time. And Kadarius Tony, who, who is catches not a even, cold all the time. He's not even going to be in the league, probably. Right. And he just won back to back Super Bowls. Like, so who catches him? Who, well, how long does it last? Because, like, it's, I think it, it solidified the reason why the Browns made the move at quarterback they did. You're For not sure. going to beat this guy. And I'm not even For this sure. person that thinks, like, I think Brock Purdy is better than what most people like to give him credit for. You're not beating Patrick Mahomes with that. We like, talked about that before you got in here. We were we, talking about how you still need an elite quarterback. You have to. It's if, if, if ever we thought, man, maybe this was like almost like a changing of guard. Like, if you have a great defense, maybe you don't have to have the top three, top five quarterback guy. I mean, well, that point's blown up because <laughs> <laughs> the same guy – just proved again, like, hey, you need to have an elite. You have to have elite level quarterback play. If and this you wasn't want even like his best season. No, this is overall like the regular season. Patrick Mahomes had a down year. You would say we but thought they were done. That's who I all wanted, year. That's who I yeah. wanted the Browns to play in the playoffs. I was like, if we could get the Chiefs somehow, I think we could. They're reeling. We could. We could take them. And then they just won the Super Bowl. Yep. Yep. Um, they now they had a they had a good defense, and I thought Quincy Carrier made a good point on Twitter too. He said. This kind of puts to bed the narrative that you can't pay your quarterback top dollar and still go win. Patrick Mahomes got half a billion dollars. Right. right. <laughs> Won two Super Bowls. Like, if your guy is that guy, yes, you can. I mean, he just won it with Scantling, Darius Tony. I mean, Rasheed Rice ended up being nice. Yeah. And he, I think he's going to go on to be nice. But, man, like, if they add a guy in free agency, you know they're going to. They're not going to waste Reed. They're not going to waste the last year or two at Kelsey. They're definitely not going to waste Patrick Mahomes. Like, they're going to go add somebody. And I think I saw they're very – they're in a good spot financially to go do so. I mean, it's going to – it goes through Kansas City until yep. – until it's it's just like it went through Foxborough and it goes through Kansas City now. Um, now, the Chiefs did have a great defense this year. They faced the number two, three, four, and six offense in the playoffs, which combined to average 28.3 points per game this season. And they held them to, uh, they averaged 15.8 against Kansas City in the playoffs. So the 12 and a half points under their average in the playoffs against the Chiefs. Their defense was very good. You give Pat Mahomes that kind of defense, yep. Yep. he's going to win Super Bowl. We thought they were super just kind of disrespected. Well, I felt like I've said it for a few weeks now, like their defense is really, really good, but you don't hear about them because Patrick Mahomes is on that team. Travis Kelsey is on that team. You have Andy Reid. Um, I think it's interesting. Chris Jones is a free agent. So I think if they want to keep something going there, they should probably. Adam Schefter said that he doesn't think Jones wants to leave. Right. But he would, if people just start throwing stupid money at him, it's. Hard to turn down stupid money. Stupid money is hard <laughs> yeah. to turn down for sure. But he, uh, he doesn't think Chris Jones wants to leave. Why would you want to? Right. If you keep winning Super Bowls, you're going to keep getting endorsements. You're going to keep legacy. Getting, yes, you're going to make your fame. money. You're going to keep getting contracts. Like you don't need to get a one one hundred million dollar contract if you can get three forty million dollar contracts. Like um, 
So in that, obviously the math is, I was just giving you an example. Yeah. Don't, Idiot. Come, don't come at me, you know, math people. This isn't the math show. Yeah. What's up, Ohio? Don't miss out on this fantastic offer from DraftKings for the big game. New customers who sign up with our promo code, the dogs, all one word, and place a $5 first bet will instantly receive $200 in bonus bets. You'll get eight $25 bonus bet tokens, allowing you to make multiple wagers with your reward. These tokens are valid for seven days, giving you time to find your favorite bets. If you download the DraftKings app before the big game, make sure to sign up with our code the Dogs to get your $200 of bonus bets. This offer is only available for new customers who are 21 and older and physically present in Ohio. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check the episode description for the full terms of the offer to see if you qualify. This episode is sponsored by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, if you missed out on the four chicken breasts and four pork chops that Omaha Steaks was doing here recently, don't worry. You can head to omahasteaks.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, today, and you'll get four free steak burgers added to any order over $99. Plus, if you have an order that's over $149, use code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out. And you'll get $30 off of that order. So right now is the perfect time to stock up. Load up that cart, guys. Steak, burgers, chicken, jumbo franks, desserts, ready-to-eat meals. They got seafood. They've got so many different things at Omaha Steaks and all of it. I've had all of it except for the seafood. I'm not going to lie. I'm not much of a seafood eater myself. My fiance thinks I'm weird, but that's okay. Everybody is their own person, but the rest of the food, I've had it all and it is phenomenal. So head to omahasteaks.com slash dogs right now. Get four free burgers on any order over $99 and use promo code dogs when you check out on any order over $149 and get $30 off your order today. OmahaSteaks.com slash dogs. Minimum order may apply. So is anybody anybody in the AFC, who's the closest to, to taking them down? I don't, I mean, going into this year, I would have said, uh, I think Buffalo's still there. I think Baltimore kind of, Baltimore looked like a team that, I thought that they were going to be extremely difficult to get out. I thought that they were going to be the team that, unfortunately, I was going to have to watch them win a Super Bowl. There's like the. It's hard for me to say that it's the Ravens and the Bills, though. When we just watched that, yes, I mean the Ravens are loaded. All we heard from every single Ravens fan who couldn't stay out of our comments up until they lost, and all of a sudden, magically, they're gone. Yeah, haven't Um, heard much. Yeah, it's very quiet. Is just how it's the best roster in all of football, and they couldn't beat him. Yep. The, the, if the Bills couldn't beat them this year, when are they going to beat right. them? I agree. You know what I mean? I think you'd have to – the Bengals, depending on what they keep together, they've kind of had the Chiefs number. Um, I don't know. Hopefully the Browns. But it's yeah. it's going to take Deshaun Watson being that guy that we paid for. If, if anything less – you saw the you saw what it's going to take. And it's kind of – I mean, I guess the one encouraging thing is when – the last time Deshaun Watson played Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs – they were up big, and then the Houston defense just totally shit the bed, and Patrick Mahomes did his thing. But at least Watson was out there going toe-to-toe. For a half. I don't remember how many points they scored in the second half. I don't know how many they scored, but I know how many the Chiefs scored, and it was enough to beat them. That um, game was crazy. But it it's going to take it's gonna take top-level QB play to go into Kansas City and beat that guy. So um, then you kind of shift to the other side. And Andrew Jackson had a um, a super chat up there. He said something is Shanahan the worst, like one of the worst big time uh, big game coaches. Zero and three. One of those, obviously, he was a, a coordinator, offensive coordinator in Atlanta. But they're up twenty eight to three and lost. He's calling plays. It's the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history. Uh, and both times with the Niners, he's had ten point leads and they lose. Um, I will say this. We are friends with a guy who's a huge 49ers fan, and he was telling me for the last two weeks leading up to this game, he was worried about Kyle. He didn't trust Kyle. Hmm. He he looks at Kyle Shanahan almost as like a, a weakness of their team. Really? Yes. Like he's, he thinks like he's good, but he, he doesn't think he's like this the goat or like just this top level guy, like the media and some people because he, he watches them every week, follows them nonstop. And he sees some of the stuff he does in terms of clock management. He, 
their injuries are so high, he thinks, because someone like using Debo as a running back and then wondering why he's getting hurt. Mm. You know what I mean? Like his usage, he just like he doesn't he just plugs and plays people. He doesn't take into account like body and, and all that kind of stuff, usage. Um, he runs them into the ground. Like he's I'm not gonna say he wants them fired, but he's not like this guy that he thinks is completely untouchable. And I've kind of mentioned this before. Somebody uh, I said something on Twitter last night, like, at what point do you have a conversation about Kyle Shanahan? And they said, Stefanski's just Shanahan light. And I said, I'd make the argument that Stefanski is better. He's done, at least in terms of win percentage, more with less. Kyle Shanahan, yeah, when he was in Atlanta for a year, had the MVP in Matt Ryan. Yep. Had Julio Jones. Did they have Roddy White then? I don't remember if that, or if that was. I th- did they have Ridley, though? They had Calvin Ridley, <laughs> Julio Jones. Uh, MVP, Matt Ryan. Okay. Dan Quinn's the head coach who obviously knows defense. Great defensive guy. When he's been with the Niners, they're freaking loaded. Yeah. They're of course it, he made the Super Bowl. The NFC is trash. He, and they have the most complete roster in football. It's, it's arguably not even close top to bottom. It's the best roster in football. I agree. Of course he wins lots of games and he has postseason postseason success, but man, CMC at one point had nine carries. Ray's texting me like, run the freaking ball. <laughs> you got you have the guy who just went offensive player of the year and you're not giving him the, the ball. Rushing and leader. it was working. The yeah. the rush attack was working. Oh, was for it Sam. ever? Yeah. I, I don't know. So it like at what where's where's the narrative gonna change about him? Because I feel like he can do no wrong in, in terms of the media's eyes. I mean, San Francisco's not gonna fire him. I mean, no, you, you know you, what I mean? You know what I, you can't, I don't think you could fire him. Right. But is he going to learn? Because again, when I said I, I can make the argument, Kevin's better. Kevin and uh, I believe Kevin and Kyle's win percentage are, are very close, like very, very close. And obviously Kyle has the postseason success. He's had the way better rosters. Okay. Kevin has done it with rosters that on paper should have been good, but he had tons of injuries dealing with backup quarterbacks and they win at least the same percentage of games and Kyle Shanahan without his, his starting quarterback is 30 games under 500. And one thing that I couldn't help thinking last night was, you know, they played the chiefs a few years ago with Jimmy Garoppolo and they came up short. So it was get rid of Jimmy, spend all these draft picks, go draft Trey Lance. We have to get that elite quarterback, right. To beat Patrick Mahomes, to be able to win this game. And then they don't even use Trey Lance, trade him away, bring in Brock Purdy, go to the game, and come up short again. So at what point is it your quarterback's issue, and what point is it your coach? I, I, to me, there was they were on their way to winning that Super Bowl. I think that muff punt the muff was punt. completely a momentum change. Yep. Like I, at one point, I was like, well, Kansas City is pretty much, they're, they're toast right now. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't do anything. I felt like that that they were just kind of defeated. And then that that punt was huge. You think about even at the beginning of the game, the CMC fumble, even though it didn't matter, you come out with points there. It really came down to a mixed, uh, missed extra point. It was blocked, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, blocked, extra, blocked point. extra point. You know, you have a CMC fumble. There was just points that were left off the board and opportunities and just, I felt like when they made mistakes, they were just so critical that you look back on the entire game at the time. It didn't matter. It's like, Oh, Hey, Kansas city didn't score any points either. But you look back at the entirety of the game. You're like that, that they had them beat. Yeah. It, they, they dominated the game basically for three quarters and lost. Yeah. Um, where do you guys, how much stock do you put into the, the story that the 49ers players didn't know the overtime rules. Did you see what Armstead and, said? And then you hear the Chiefs guy came out and said, every week in the playoffs during meetings, we had mm-hmm. OT rules covering and strategy, strategy. Yeah. for oh, overtime. I didn't catch that. That's every week in the playoffs. And they said they did it twice during Super Bowl week because they had two weeks to prepare. And there's 49ers players who didn't even know the new rules. Shanahan came out and said he wanted uh, – they kicked – because they wanted to have the third possession in case they scored and Kansas City matched. They wanted to have the ball with a chance that any score would win it. But, like, I, I, if you go down and you only get three, or even if you get seven, now the Chiefs know 
they got four downs every play. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, they got four downs every play. The clock then essentially doesn't matter because each team, you get your possession. So, like, you heard some people were confused. Uh, Tony Romo was saying, like, this is just, like, the first quarter. Yeah. Right. And it's because they get their full possession. They have, they it, The clock didn't matter. So it would it just would have went to basically quarter number two of overtime and they could have kept going, so uh, kicking it made no sense to me. I'm with you on that. Yep, everything and, and, I've and heard the about fact that. that. And does the players not knowing the rules is does it really matter? Probably you probably told them what to do. Like you you went and got him and you told them what you wanted to do. It, it's a coin toss, but it kind of shows to your preparation, right? When you're selling at the coin toss, <laughs> yes, you know what I mean, like. Um, so it's just, I don't know. So, we're, I mean, were you surprised by the decision at the coin toss? Because they won the coin toss. Were you thinking almost like a college football approach where you're like, we want them to go first. We want to we want to take defense first. Because it really doesn't, and with the new overtime rule, it doesn't matter. If they score a touchdown, you still get a possession. Yes. I so, would have kept, I so you're saying kept. just, yeah. And just because I, I didn't really catch all the new overtime rules. So say, say the 49ers... Uh, kick the ball, Chiefs go and they fumble or they throw an interception. Four Niners get the ball, go down and scores. That, that's game that's over, it. right? That's, that's done. So that's yeah. another reason for me to want to give the other team the ball first. Like I'll give you the first chance to make a mistake. Yes, you know. Yeah, and it's I, a, it's a lot easier too to sit here the next day and go, oh, uh, you know. Well, if you know the, it, you but I get though, what you're it's saying. Been the yeah. rules all year though, right? So you would think like, especially if you have two weeks to prepare, you'd be sitting with your coaches coming up with a strategy just in yes. case it's not it's not sudden death in you obviously five years ago you take the ball yes you know what i mean you take the ball thanks for listening to another episode of the dogs podcast make sure you subscribe on youtube and follow us on twitter at the dogs podcast get your thoughts on the show at the dogs podcast.com At Athletic Brewing Co., we know the big game's no time for a bad call, on or off the field. This year, you and your friends can make the best call of the night by bringing Athletic Brews to the party. Whether they're your pick for the night or the perfect fourth quarter audible, Athletic Brewing Co.'s great tasting, non-alcoholic brews can put a win without a hangover in the palm of everyone's hands. Head to athleticbrewing.com to find a store near you and stock up for Sunday.